Welcome to Municipal Affairs. I'm Christopher Brown. Today's episode, we're shining a spotlight on a aspect of daily life within the province of Alberta, transportation. Alberta's municipalities are as diverse as the landscapes and the transportation needs of each community reflects that variety. Whether it's the urban bustles of cities like Edmonton, Calgary, Red Deer, or Grand Prairie, or the rural tranquility of smaller towns, villages, or yes, even summer villages, local governments are constantly seeking innovative ways to reduce congestion, improve mobility, and enhance the quality of life for their residences. Now, in 2023, Alberta municipalities at their annual convention in Edmonton passed a motion to lobby the provincial government to work with municipalities to allow golf carts on designated municipal roads. In response, on October 23rd, 2024, Alberta's government announced that it would work hand-in-hand with municipalities to offer more flexible transportation options, tailoring solutions that fit local needs and preferences. The province has announced that the town of Coldale, along with six other communities, would allow the use of golf carts on municipal roads. This initiative not only improves mobility, but also opens new recreational opportunities, allowing communities to explore fresh ways of getting around while easing the burden of traditional road traffic. The six other communities that are participating in this pilot project are the County of Lacombe, the Village of Linden, Summer Village of Whispering Hills, the Town of Delburn, the Village of Acme, and the Summer Village of Half Moon Bay. Today, we sit down with Coaldale's Mayor Jack Van Region to hear firsthand how this pilot project will unfold in his community, what motivated Coaldale to embrace this idea, and what impact he believes the program will have on the transportation needs within the Southern community. Mayor, I want to thank you so much for sitting down with me and talking about this important step in the sort of transportation needs of the town of Coaldale. Uh, it was announced in the town of Coaldale that the province would be piloting a new program which would allow golf carts on municipally designated roads. Why was this important for Coaldale to be part of this pilot program? Well, Chris, this, first of all, thank you for having me on the program. Uh, this started... Um, Back in 1987, when um, the golf course got built, 18-hole uh, golf course called Lando Lakes. And um, they have a subdivision as part of that, uh, what they call Fairway Drive. And it's been like that for 35 years. And then as what municipalities do, they uh, wipe the dust off their bylaws and they make sure they're up to date and they're checking for this and checking for that. And we had our uh, our uh, legal team come back and say that there's a problem with the existing bylaw that was granted in 1987, as far as the fact that it does not uh, uh, meet Alberta traffic. Uh, I'm sorry, the Alberta Traffic Safety Act. So that would put uh, the town of Coldell in a, in a uh, not a good position if something should happen on that public roadway with a golf cart. So fast forward 35 years to uh, June 27th of 2022, when it was brought to our attention and we got the legal opinion back, we had to rescind that bylaw. And as you would know, if you lived in on Fairway Drive for 35 years and you got noticed that uh, you can't drive your golf cart anymore, that that did not go over well. I'll be perfectly honest about that. So uh, we had a couple of uh, meetings with staff, and then um, I reached out to our local MLA, Grant Hunter, and Grant, uh, excellent, excellent MLA. And when something's going on, not only in Coldell or anywhere in his riding, he is all over that to see what he can do to help. So I met with him. Uh, privately on a couple of occasions and then we set up a meeting on March 10th of 2023 with all of our council with Grant at the Lando Lakes uh, clubhouse and they invited all the residents uh, from Fairway Drive to attend and some of the other residents that live in in neighboring subdivisions to to, the, to uh, Fairway Drive also attended because 
they like to sneak their golf carts on the public roadway as well. So what came out of that meeting was that, uh, uh, and again, credit to Grant that we need to look at this closer and, and he was gonna bring it uh, back to Edmonton to the Minister of Transportation and Economic uh, Corridors, uh, uh, Minister Dreeshen. So uh, he was very favorable on this idea as well. And, and he's the one that said, well, let's give it a, let's give it a try. Let's do a pilot project. So Grant uh, gave me the good news about uh, three weeks ago that uh, the province was going to make this happen. And because we initiated it, they wanted to come and do it in the town of Coldell at our local golf course. So there's a few things I want to sort of try to figure out here, because when this came across my desk, this news release, the first thing I thought to myself was, does this mean that there's going to be golf cart after golf cart after golf cart on municipal roads within the town of Coldale? Or is this only going to be to, for designated municipal roads? Are you going to be restricting them on certain roads or all the roads or how is this going to work from a city a town's perspective to ensure that people are safe so excellent question no we're not going to let golf carts drive all over colo on any street or avenue so we have to pre-designate the areas and again i'm going to go back to fairway drive yeah so fairway drive is right part of the golf course and we want to make it right for them because uh, they've had it that way for 35 years where the residents could just travel down a half a block. Uh, some cases, maybe a block, they would have to go on the public roadway. Then they get into the golf course in infrastructure to get to the clubhouse. So we want to make it right for them. So fairway drive is what we're pushing to get done right now. And the other surrounding uh uh, subdivisions that have kind of hinted that, you know, we want to be part of this as well. We have to uh, have a, a serious conversation as uh, as a council with our administration team. We have to do uh, uh, some uh, risk uh, work on that. And anything that we would like to see happen, we have to get approved by the province as well. It's not just up to us. So um, we're going to start with Fairway Drive and then see where that goes. We are still in early days of this. This announcement as a recording just came out this morning. I know you've known about it for a bit of time, but the announcement of this pilot project just came out on October 24th. Um, I, I, I want to know what metrics from a town perspective are you looking to put into place to ensure that this is a viable cause to potentially not just have a pilot project, but put it into bylaws and ensure that Fairway Drive, and I'm just picking on Fairway Drive because you're you're mentioning it a few times that we're not rescinding it in a year's time to not allow uh, golf carts on municipal designated roads. No, well, exactly, and and we have to have a, a bylaw in place that we have to submit to the province, yeah. and they'll check off all the boxes to make sure that we meet their requirements, and then also as far as the. Um, uh, Safety, uh, Alberta Safety uh, Traffic Act as well. We have to meet those requirements. So that's the first step. Another um, item that we have that's kind of uh, uh, something separately we have to deal with. They have a, a two fairways that where they have to use the public sidewalk for the, the cart path. Very short distances they have to do that. So um, we're doing some uh, paperwork uh, around that as well, where we can lease some of that uh, piece of concrete sidewalk for that little area. So that becomes part of their insurance umbrella and not the town of Coldales. But again, um, we're gonna start small with fairway drive. And uh, another comment regarding the pilot project, there are six other communities that uh, are going for this as well. And that's the County of Lacombe, uh, village of Whispering Hills, uh, Village of Delburn, uh, Village of Acme, and Half Moon Bay. And uh, so they're working on this as we speak as well. 
because I, I know that Alberta municipalities did have a resolution around this at the 2023 fall convention in Edmonton last year. And it passed with 70% of respondents saying that we would be in favor of lobbying the provincial government. While you guys were a little bit ahead of that sort of curve in advocating it for in the sort of spring of 2023, what do you take out of this sort of two year long sort of two year work that you guys have been doing behind the scenes to get to where you are today. I know you credit Grant Hunter, but is it the advocacy work that you've done as a municipal council to get to this place because you heard from residents and ultimately when residents tell you something, you're actually following through on it? Yes. And I'm, I'm very uh, proud of our council. We're very proactive and, uh, like you say, when, when we're asked the question, we want to find the answer. And if that means that I have to take a drive up to Calgary or in Edmonton to meet with uh, ministers, I'll definitely do that. And with along with any councillors I want to come with. We have an awesome administrative uh, team here in Coldell that do most of the legwork, uh, working with the chiefs of staffs of the ministers. Um, and they make us look good as a council, but behind the scenes, they're doing most of the work. Um. From a residential standpoint, I know, again, we're still in early days, if not hours of this recording, but have you had conversations with the residents of Coldale, particularly in that fairway drive, to get their reactions on them potentially getting the use of their uh, golf carts on the municipal road back again? Well, I invited all the fairway drive to come to the announcement this morning, and I asked them to bring their friends, their golfing friends. And I'm going to say we probably have between 30 and 40 uh, residents there at uh, 8.30 this morning in the brisk fall air. And uh, they're very ecstatic. Uh, they uh, gave uh, Grant a, a good, solid, well-earned round of applause for all, all his work on this. So, My final question for you is, there is a safety aspect that golf carts will have to adhere by on the the, the uh, municipal roads. In your bylaw, when it's created, are you looking at the municipal golf carts to get insurance or some type of insurance to ensure there is safety around the use of these motorized vehicles? Or did the province insure and tell you that insurance will be required to operate golf carts on municipal roadways? Well, the province has done a lot of legwork on this for us already, but when we draft our bylaws, those are considerations we have to take in. And again, this is such at the early stages that uh, we still have to work with our, our legal opinions and such. It's so, all about liability, all about <laughs> liability nowadays. It certainly is. So I'm assuming that you're hoping that this gets put into place while you're wearing the bylaws for next year's golf season, right? I basically promised the golfers there today that this will be done by the time that spring comes. Awesome. Uh, Mayor, before I let you go, I've just any final parting words about what this means for the town of Coaldale from a tourism perspective, from a residential perspective, from a uh, recreational standpoint uh, that you'd want to make sure people know about? Again, for myself, and council, it's all about the residents on Fairway Drive to make it right for them, the way it has been for 35 years. Again, I, I have to emphasize we're not going to open up the floodgates here and, and let people come from across town, uh, go do groceries with golf carts and, and do whatever. So uh, we're, we're taking baby steps here and uh, we'll see what uh, the next uh, corner brings us as far as getting this all figured out. Are you passionate about local governance and municipal issues? Do you believe in the power of community-driven conversations? Then join us at the Cross Border Network, where we bring together voices from across Canada to shine a spotlight on the challenges and the triumphs of our municipalities. But we need your support to keep the conversation going. Visit crossborderinterviews.ca today to show your support by backing the show monthly or making a one-time annual donation. Your contribution will help us grow and expand our reach, bringing important stories to even more listeners across the nation. Together, we can make a difference. Together, we can amplify the voices of local communities. Together, we can shape a brighter future for all. 
cross-border network where local matters and your support counts. Visit us today at crossborderinterviews.ca. We also spoke with Mike Pashik, president of the Association of Summer Villages of Alberta, who we spoke to after the Alberta municipalities passed the motion to lobby the provincial government in 2023. We chatted with him just recently about this announcement and what it means for summer villages across the province. Mike, I want to thank you so much for sitting down with me and talking about this new change in legislation that the province announced earlier this week of allowing uh, golf carts on municipal roads in some communities as of this week. Uh, I know you and I had spoken after the Alberta Municipalities Conference in 2023 because Summer Villages had put forward a motion to ask Alberta Municipalities to advocate on uh, to allow golf carts on municipal roads. Are you happy with what the province has announced this week? Yeah, Chris, you know, thanks for having me. Um, yeah, we're happy. Matter of fact, um, I'm re- really quite impressed with the speed the Alberta government moved. You know, uh, typically when you make changes to particularly the traffic by Alberta Traffic uh, Act, it, you think it would take a long time, but they moved very quickly on this. Within six months, uh, uh, they had their uh, consultation done. They had the uh, regulations in place. And and here we are. I just read on the news uh, yesterday that there are now seven municipalities in Alberta that have their uh, golf cart bylaws approved. So uh, we're on our way. So of those seven, a few of them are the summer villages of Half Moon Bay, of Whispering Hills. Um, why why was this important for summer villages to allow golf carts on municipal roads? Because I'm just trying to think of this as an outsider's perspective. It just seems like a potential transportation nightmare for seeing golf yeah. carts on the road with Ford F-150s. Yeah, uh, uh, absolutely. It could be a nightmare. And and. We like uh, what the Alberta government has done. Uh, You know, they're only allowed on roads uh, with a speed limit of 50 kilometers per hour. So, you know, we're not uh, competing with those large trucks at 100 kilometers an hour. And and the reality of it is, is that golf carts in certain municipalities and certainly in the seven municipalities that have always already uh, moved forward on the pilot project, uh, they've always been in use and so actually what we're doing is legalizing that use and and making it okay or right uh for for people to use their golf carts uh and and so i think that's why it it's important for summer villages and small villages and towns whoever decides to go is that there's some use already in place so let's just legalize it and for those that want to follow the rules they can drive their golf carts where they're allowed. While it is legalizing it, and I know uh, we, we when we spoke in October of 2023, this was already going on, is just putting the sort of the paperwork in place. Are there metrics that you're going to be putting into place as the president of the Association of Summer Villages of Alberta to ensure that this is the right move for summer villages? Because I can imagine that there might be some skeptics out there that this is going to open up a can of worms that your communities are going to be overrun by golf carts now. And it's going to be just an all out war on golf carts versus uh, uh, traditional modes of transportation. Yeah. You know, so the ASVA's role isn't to help regulate the other uh, summer villages. Our role is really to there to uh, help educate and support them and what they decide to do so it is a council decision and they have to do what's right for their community but what the asva is going to do is in providing supports is we now have a couple of uh, approved sets of bylaws and so we're putting them on our going to put them on our website for other summer villages to use as a template and certainly at our our, at our conference last week uh, the summer village conference last week that's what we talk about to our members, that once Half Moon Bay, the summer village of Half Moon Bay, got their bylaws approved, and which just happened yesterday, 
um, we would have two templates on our website for those folks to um, uh, use to help um, move them ahead a little bit quicker. And just on, you know, can I, get, your, can I just clarify for a second? I apologize yeah. to interrupt, but I just need clarification. Now, when you say uh, Summer Village of Half Moon Bay has approved their bylaw, the council has approved. The province still needs to sign off on the bylaw, correct? No, we just got our letter yesterday that the province has signed off on the, the uh, our oh. bylaws. Okay. Matter of fact, <laughs> um, I read about our approval in uh, in the news, <laughs> and so I so then all of a sudden I I sent that over to our CAO, and he said, "Oh yeah, I just got the letter this morning," and so that's how quickly the news media can pick up on stories. Um, and I, I think it was part of the. Alberta government was down in the Lethbridge area and the town of Coaldale made an official announcement on the, on the pilot project. And our name was mentioned there as well. So um, yeah, we're, we're setting what has to happen next. It comes back to council. We do the second and third reading it's approved. And then we have to figure out how to uh, operationalize it in time for uh, the next golf cart season. So is that when you're hoping to launch it? Because I did speak to Mayor Jack Van Regen for this episode as well. His episode, his interview was just before yours. And he said that he hopes to have his bylaw in place for the 2025 spring season, because I can't imagine people are going to be out driving golf carts in the middle of uh, minus 40 weather in Alberta this winter, yeah. if you get it passed by the end of this month. So are you hoping to have it fully in place and all the regulations from a summer village perspective in place before spring comes around in 2025? Absolutely. Our, our targets to uh, have it ready by mid April uh, next year, and uh, just in time for uh, the next season, for sure. And I just want to go back to uh, the earlier question you asked about does ASVA, will they help uh, regulate uh, golf carts and, uh, and help mun municipalities? You know, I just want to give a, a quick example. Around Sylvan Lake, there's, there's five municipalities. And, you know, two out of the five have said, you know what? Golf carts don't aren't going to work for us, and the, the setup of their roads, and their neighborhoods, the uniqueness of their own summer villages, they're not going to move forward. And so, uh, you know, it goes back to every council has to understand uh, what their community wants and what their community, uh, from a safety perspective, uh, can support. And uh, you know, if if they want to move ahead. The ASVA is there to help them with the paperwork. So from a local perspective, as a representative of Half Moon Bay, do you, do you, have you heard from residents yet? Because I know we're still early days. This was just announced yesterday. You just got the approval yesterday. But have you heard from your residents or have they sent anything into the municipality saying, when can we start driving our <laughs> carts illegally no, on no, the roads it's, here? It's, it's pretty early in the process. Now, uh, residents would have seen that we passed uh we had our first reading on the bylaw so that we could then send it to alberta transportation and economic corridors um and and so you know that happened six weeks ago and really nobody's nobody has said anything yet because it's not actual fact that they can but i can tell you <laughs> on the side is that they've been driving their golf carts for many years now and over the last six weeks, I've continued to see them drive their golf carts. And next year, they'll be legal to do so. So in your own community, are you opening it? So the, the regulations that the province has said, it has to be a, a, a street that is under 50 kilometers per hour, up to 50 kilometers per hour, I should say. Does that run full bore with your community? Because I'm assuming all municipal roads, unless otherwise designated, are 50 kilometers per hour or under. So does this mean that you're going to have people going to do grocery shopping or going to the corner store in their <laughs> uh, golf cart? Well, um, in our community, no. They, they won't be going grocery shopping or uh, to the local rec center, uh, mostly because uh, in our community, we go to the next town, the town next to us to do our grocery shopping. And that involves... Uh, some uh, higher speed roads. So we won't be doing that. But what it 
does mean is that uh, folks can move around our community, enjoy our parks, our, our beach areas, our, our picnic areas, and do so with, with their golf carts. Will the summer villages or the municipalities that you represent be requiring the uh, the user or the operator of these golf carts to register with the municipality? Because I I I'm just thinking of the uh, insurance nightmare if something happens yeah. to someone in an accident, and God forbid that ever happens. But if there is an accident what insurance is going to be involved? Does the province ask the municipalities to require insurance to operate golf carts? No, or you know, is this open the, ended? Yeah. The, you know, so the kind of the beauty of this regulation from the Alberta government is that they didn't get overly prescriptive on what the rules were and, and uh, su surprised the heck out of me. Because when I look at BC uh, and Ontario's pilot projects, the rules for golf carts are pretty strict. There's a, a ton of safety equipment and features that you have to install. The Alberta government took more of a hands-off approach and said, look, whatever the manufacturer has put on the golf cart, that's okay with us. And they've done their research uh, to understand that there are no uh, insurance uh, vehicles out there uh, for a uh, for a golf cart, and so they did not require insurance, uh, any sort of insurance. And uh, I do know that uh, one of the municipalities that has been approved for their bylaws is asking for golf cart owners to provide uh, two million dollars in liability insurance. Now that means they're going to have to work out with their homeowner insurance to figure out what kind of $2 million liability, how, how to get that on their homeowner's insurance. Because right now uh, there's no vehicle insurance that would cover it, but that's the only one I've heard of. Okay. Um, the two summer villages have chosen not to have any insurance requirements. And, and going back to the first part of the question, um, you have to register with your golf cart, you will get a, a sticker um, showing that you're registered and registering allows uh, the municipality and therefore the government to collect certain uh, pieces of information uh, on the golf cart and the user to help uh, to help uh, educate everybody on uh, this pilot project and, and what what the in five years time, what the the formal regulation should say. So to end off, what's the one takeaway that you want people to know about this new pilot program that is going to be rolling out here in 2025, if not earlier, depending on if people can get up to speed, because we always know those Chinooks come and we get warm weathers during the yeah. winter months. So what's the one thing you hope people take away about what the, what's going on in your summer villages, the two summer villages, but along with this pilot program? You know, for me, the, the takeaway is if your municipality can support uh, golf cart use on roads, then go ahead and do it because it's likely been done forever in a day anyhow. So with a, some bare minimum rules, now folks can go ahead and enjoy their golf carts and not always be looking over their shoulder to see if the bylaw officer is on the road uh, waiting to stop stop them on the way to the golf course, on the way to the picnic grounds, you know, those sorts of things. So um, it, it's, it's a great opportunity and, uh, you know, just happy that the Alberta government moves so quickly. Thank you so much for tuning in for another episode of Municipal Affairs. We hope you've enjoyed today's episode talking about a significant movement within the municipal sector within the province of Alberta. If you haven't already, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss an upcoming episode. Stay connected, stay informed, and we'll see you next time here on Municipal Affairs. Until then.